March 13th, 2017, personnel finance meeting to order. Uh, first up on our agenda is approval of the agenda. We have a motion to support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimous. Item three, we're at public comment. <coughs> we're short on public today. No public comment due to lack of participation. We'll move on down to item four. Uh, I need approval unless there's changes for the February 13, 2013 minutes. Move to approve the minutes. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimous. Uh, next up is our treasurer, quarterly treasurer report. Welcome, Karen. Good morning. So I don't have the ability to pull up the report that I sent you, but you should all be able to see it through board docs. Um, and really, I know you've had some time to look at that. Hopefully you did go through it. It's quite lengthy, but I try to be uh, as informative as possible in the process um, that we go through each year and give you a lot of data and statistics and all those fun numbers. Um, so I guess what I'll, I'll kind of just breeze through this and highlight some points that I wanted to talk about. And then if there's questions, I'm here to answer those. Um, so the first part of the report, it talks about our foreclosure prevention methods. Um, and we've actually been holding steady with the same um, process, same philosophy, if you will, for the past couple of years, utilizing Step Forward, um, as well as the ability to grant extensions through the show cause hearing and our foreclosure hearing in January and February. Um, the next items talk about the distribution of county funds. We've got some data on page six. Seven highlights our investments, as well as eight shows the detail where we ended as of December um, 16. So then let's go on and talk about um, forfeiture and foreclosure. Those are the big numbers that uh, I usually spend quite a bit of time talking about. If there's questions, I can certainly answer them as well. For 2016, our forfeiture numbers did see a slight increase. Um, nothing too uh, out of whack, but I did want to point that out. Uh, we ended up uh, March 1st with 2,391 parcels. Um, and like I said, that's just a very slight increase from 2015. The next uh, topics we talk about in further detail on page 12 is foreclosure prevention. That gives you the um, numbers of taxpayers that were impacted, also gives you some dollars, talks about the Step Forward program in uh, further detail. Page 13 talks about our foreclosure numbers for 2016. We ended up with a total of 224 parcels. That uh, was a slight decrease from 2015, um, albeit by six parcels, but we'll take it. Uh, so we're holding steady right around the 220, 230 parcel um, count. Uh, the graph on page 14 shows you the history, and I do go back to 2002, but I think it's important to look at uh, the foreclosures as it's impacting Jackson County. It's important to note, too, on page 15, I talk about uh, where we fall in comparison to the statewide statistics. You'll see that top chart there that talks about uh, Jackson number of parcels forfeited, the number of parcels that we foreclosed on, and our percentage rate in Jackson for 16 was 10%, and the statewide foreclosure rate was 11%. So we are still below the statewide average. I think that is important to mention. And then we'll move on to the dog and kennel license programming. As you recall, last July we rolled out a new program for dog licensing. Um, I had uh, in, sent a, a, together a package of expanding the dog license fees and options. Uh, that went through committee and uh, board approval. We rolled out the program in July. Um, this just kind of highlights the changes and the education program that we rolled out. The new fee schedule is on there, um, and we have we have seen success with regard to the dog licensing program. You'll see on page 17, there's a slight increase in the total amount of licenses that we issued. 
Through December 16, um, we had 8,926 licenses totaling just over 87,000. Um, so we are seeing a continued success with that dog licensing program. Um, we've had um, a lot of education that we have had the opportunity to inform dog licenses or dog license owners about their licensing. Um, and we've had success with that. So if you're looking for um, some concrete information from July till December of 16, we have issued approximately 1,500 licenses totaling just over $16,000. So um, approximately 5,000 of that was collected for dog licenses online. Um, it is March 2017. We are still processing dog licenses. Uh, we see, uh, we have seen a significant increase of um, dog owners utilizing the dog license program online. So I think that is a success. And really, that's all that I've got to highlight, so I will open it up for questions. Oh, I do want to state that um, where we are today as far as our numbers that are coming down the pike uh, for March 31st of this year, right now, uh, we did uh, ran some numbers this morning. We've got 503 parcels that are left to redeem in the foreclosure cycle. It's March, what, 13? So we've got 15 days left to redeem those 503 parcels, so we will be very busy the next 15 days, and our hope is that we can get under the 224 parcels that we had last year. So um, it is important to note that the 503 that we've got today is 58 fewer parcels than we were this time last year, so we are seeing a, a decrease in that number. So that's some more current information. It's not necessarily in our report, but I did want to update since we are in the month of March and foreclosures coming 15 days down the road. So any questions that I can answer for you? Questions, Lord? I have one. Yes, please. The uh, Step Forward program, uh, it says here that it's funded by state and federal money to pay the taxes. Is there a process where the property owner has to repay or is this just a grant to the homeowner to pay their taxes? It is a program loan repayment program and that's it funnels directly through MISHTA in the state um, and they have to qualify it uh, for it per their guidelines but yes it is a loan repayment um, program but if they qualify and they decide to utilize those loan program dollars, they can get up to $30,000 to assist in paying delinquent taxes off, which is pretty phenomenal. Absolutely, correct. I didn't know if that was that or just kind of wipe the slate clean. It helps them in the immediate, but yes, there's, there's a payback that they need to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Nobody has? Uh, Chairman Shotwell. Karen, I want to thank you for your due diligence and hard work on the Michener properties and dealing with those. But my, I have a question about some of the affiliated buildings that have gone up um, and have been purchased by outside agencies. And do we have, since the county was obviously the prior, own, prior owner, mm -hmm. and now there, there's a possibility that some of these properties are going to be owned by other people, do we have, do we have liability that protects us? from some of that, if they, they find stuff in adjacent buildings or that type of stuff, and if they do, should they be contacting your office or what should be going on? Are you talking about specifically the mechanic and angling properties or are you talking about other properties? I'm just talking about in general. In general? Yeah. As a foreclosing governmental unit, we have immunity. Okay. So there is a level of protection because we are getting these properties through adverse possession. So I think the short answer is yes, we are protected. Good. Because I know that as we go forward, sometimes sometimes you'll get a property and we'll have we'll been involved in a cleanup or whatever, and then <clears throat> someone will find new concrete, you know, hidden under old mm -hmm. pallets or something like that and right. become aware of something buried. And that's the reason why I just want to make sure since we were the previous owner. And I knew only because of your history here with these two projects recently mm -hmm. that uh, you did a good review of, of protecting us and working with us. So yeah. That's Absolutely. It's my utmost concern. With the mechanic properties and angling properties, we were aware of the historical con contamination. That's why we proceeded the way that we did contacting the state and the DEQ and the EPA to let them know that we recently foreclosed on the properties 
and we know that there's contamination. There's a lot of properties that we may not have that history, so it becomes a little bit difficult, but I'm very aware of the fact that we have some level, actually a very good level of immunity with the respect to protecting ourselves from contamination. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Karen while she's here? I have one more. Yes. What is the, do you have a final number on, on the cleanup of the angling and the Mechanic Street properties, the, the former Missioner properties? The county? The, the final number, what it cost for cleanup there. I mean, I realize we didn't Yeah, they started it. in August of 2015. I'm going to guesstimate Yes. that the Mechanic Street property cost the EPA, not the County of Jackson, just, uh, a, I think, just above $1.3 million. And that was all Superfund dollars, so that was not a cost, a direct cost to Jackson County. And the Angling Avenue Street property uh, was from the EPA. The um, cost was just over 700000 for cleanup. If you need further, firmer numbers, I can get those for you, Phil. No, that's fine. Just kind of a curious, sure. curiosity. Thank you very much. Commissioner Yeah, Elmo. just one comment. I, I think it's worth remembering that uh, back when we took possession of that property, the owner was in here trying to convince us to do otherwise. Uh, and we many times get criticism for taking property for back taxes, but in this case it's good because it would have just sat there festering for God knows how long, and now we've got it cleaned up. So Absolutely. I'm glad for that. I think we've improved the community in that area because we've removed all those. They were hazardous containers, tonnage, we're talking, major tons of contaminated properties. And God forbid something happened to the structure, we have a very big issue that could impact a lot of people in the county. So to have those, those items removed, clean up, and the site does look really good. Um, they did a very good job with the cleanup, so... say what is the plan with for the site now there is no new uh, updates with regard to that as I updated the board I think maybe last July uh, maybe even December we had the DEQ come back after the EPA came in and did all the removal and the DEQ did sampling of the soil uh, at the Mechanic Street property they took a bunch of samples and I've yet to see any type of analysis so I think Working and partnering with the DEQ at this point will tell us what we can and cannot do uh, with those sites in the future, but there has not been any real activity. Obviously, the weather is a contributing factor, but um, it's really for this board to decide what we wish to do in the future with it, but the fact that we've removed the immediate contamination is a bonus. Karen, is there any value to that property if, if it's contamination-free and the soil is good? Is there any value to that property for for reuse, do you think, or is it another hotel waiting for us? In my opinion, it, the structure probably does need to come down. It's uh, the parts of the roof are collapsing, so it's just an obsolete, functionally obsolete property. Unless they take it down to the ground and start and just use the land, um, but that's really for the DEQ to say whether or not we can do that. We don't want to be disrupting any soil and, and have a contamination bloom or anything like that, so we need to be careful. Um, I'm not sure that uh, the um, EG group would be interested in trying to market that. That's a possibility. The, the actual property, or uh, I should say structure, is a wooden structure. Mm -hmm. and it, 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 won't, it won't support what people are looking for the, with ceiling heights, with cranes. They're not looking for wooden structures like that. You know. Any further... Any further discussion, questions? Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Up next, we move on to item 4C, facilities. We'll be discussing the former animal shelter and uh, a new facility to replace the storage capacity of that. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. You have in front of you an update on the sale and functional replacement for the Blackstone properties. Now that we have a final good faith offer from the state and we have our bids in for the uh, new storage buildings we wanted to come back
to the commission and ask for permission for the chairman to sign the sales agreement and the good faith offer. Commissioner Elwell. Rick, if I read it right, it's 226, 226000 to purchase the property, and then they're going to reimburse us in four separate payments of in a total of eleven or $1.1 million, essentially? Correct, sir. Okay. And that's for rebuilding what we want out to Channer Road? Yes. Okay. I would so move the request. Support. Yes, I'm going to ask for your indulgence to have Mr. Wellman present this. Rusty's our project manager. He's the one who solicited all the bids, uh, is intimately aware and involved in this replacement process. So, Rusty, step on. Welcome, Rusty. Thank you. Um, as you know, we've been replacing windows in the courthouse. The first, second, and third floor have been completed. Uh, there was money budgeted in 2016 to replace the fourth floor windows. Um, there was 75000 um, budgeted, and so we put it out to bid. We have three proposals, the lowest coming from um, Rogers Glass out of Battle Creek for $23,500. Um, we had a significant amount left in that budget, so we pursued getting pricing for the stairwells, for the northeast stairwell and the southeast stairwell. Combined, those um, came to a total of 69500 still under the $75,000 budgeted, and we would like to proceed with this process of getting those windows replaced. Thank you. Questions? Commissioner Elwell. Just a couple. Uh, it's quite a difference from the bid you're recommending to the next closest one. Uh, more than 10%. Is it the same product they're going to provide or equivalent? It is the same product, actually. They both um, quoted the Wojan M950 series windows. Um, that would be Jackson Glass and Rogers Glass both proposed those. Quality Glass was a different product. Uh, I apologize, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but um, it, it was still the same quality product, just a different brand. Um, but the two low numbers were for the Wojun M950 series. And then a financial question, uh, maybe for Mike or, or Rick. We had moved money from what they called the Justice Center Fund quite some time ago, and I think we segregated that, Mike, into a capital improvement fund. Is Over a five-year period. Okay, and that's where this money is coming from, and or is that gone now? No, we... We're still in the middle of that process over the five-year period. Did this come out of the Justice Center Fund? I believe so, Dave, but... That money can only be used um, over there at the courthouse, is Correct. the way I understand it. So anytime we have the opportunity to use that money, we would use that money, so... Okay. Yeah, so that's why I say I... I Jim could answer for sure, but yes, yes. Uh, I think that's roughly half a million dollars. And this would come out of that then. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? If not, I'd like a motion uh, to send this forward to the full board. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Thank you, board. Passes. Thank you, Rick. Thank, Thank you, you Rusty. Folks. Next up, item 4E finance or improvement, capital improvement uh, plan carryover budget amendment. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, uh, this is our annual request for our budget amendments where we carry forward those capital improvement projects that are in process as of year end or those projects that have not started. So I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions about specific items, uh, but this is, again, this is our routine request. Bookkeeping issues, correct? Pardon me? Bookkeeping issues, basically. We're just 
carry uh, it yes, over? Yes, that's correct. Spent money? That is correct. We have to reappropriate these funds from the year before. We have a motion in support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimous. Okay, move on to item 4E or F, our monthly finance report. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, this is the financials for the first month of the new fiscal year. And um, again, it's too soon to tell any trends, but we are uh, uh, underspent relative to the three year average. Uh, we're pretty much on target for the beginning of the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? Thank you. Appreciate it, Jim. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item if I, five. If I may. Okay. It occurs to me that uh, our intern sitting out here, and I don't believe everyone's had opportunity to meet him. Why don't you come on up to the podium and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Trevor Palafka, and <coughs> currently interning at the Administrator Controlling office so nice to see every one of you <laughs> welcome aboard t t tell, tell them what you're studying where you're um, in school. I'm, I'm currently in the process of transferring to Northwood University to play baseball and my field of study is um, accounting and I'd like to possibly go into management or some finance of that sort My goal is to make him, make him a city manager, a county guy. We need young people coming up into the industry. <laughs> well, there was a Freudian slip there, the controlling office. And it's not really, but <laughs> Jackson native? Uh, yes, yeah. I graduated from Jackson High in 2015. Okay. Thank you. Yep. What position? Trevor? Baseball. Oh, Baseball. What position? Oh, I play uh, second base. Second base. Yep. We want a pro ball player here. I've seen him play. He's worth watching. He's a really good player. Yep, thanks. That's quite a schedule there. <laughs> 